So is it about more than just your paycheck? Yeah, it's about more than your paycheck. You know, you're losing a piece of your history, and you know, it kind of, seems kind of strange. It's fencing off a place, and you'll never go back to it. You know. Yeah. Today, President Obama declared the first marine national monument in the Atlantic Ocean. This decision came after an array of untouched coral reefs were discovered 150 miles off the coast of New England in 2014. We went to New Bedford, Massachusetts to find out more. New Bedford is the most lucrative fishing port in the country, bringing in over $300 million worth of catch every year. The port is home to many fisheries, including scallops, crabs, and lobsters. But there's a lot more than seafood in these waters. Ready to dive? Pilot is ready. Going down, 50 meters and hold, please. In 2014, a survey by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration revealed 73 unique species of several hundred-year-old corals, all in the area now slated for protection. Just a reminder, you are not looking at Hawaii. This is right off the coast of Connecticut. The reason for selecting this area is that it is very, very unusual, maybe unique, in its coral formations, the canyons, combined with the undersea mountains that are the highest east of the Rockies. Senator Richard Blumenthal asked President Obama to use his executive power and designate the area as the first ever Atlantic Marine National Monument. The monument will encompass almost 5,000 square miles into an underwater national park. That's about five times the size of Rhode Island. There's an urgency to protect this area through a monument before commercial interests damage or destroy it. You mentioned that it's pristine. What exactly is threatening it right now? What's threatening any part of the ocean where there may be natural resources are oil and mineral exploration, man's inevitable effort to develop and exploit resources under the sea. But what effect will it have on the regional fishing industry? John Brewer comes from a long line of lobster fishermen and has been captain of this boat, the Hannah Bowden, for eight years. So what does it mean to lose that area? It's money out of your pocket, and it's uh, putting more pressure on other spots that don't have as many crabs that you might pass through quick. You know, you're talking about putting a monument 150 miles offshore where 99% of the people are never going to see it or probably even hear about it, and you're putting people out of work to do it, you know? The Atlantic Red Crab Company, which John works for, estimates that 20 to 40% of their catch could disappear now that the monument is established. That would mean $5 million in losses annually. It doesn't make you feel very good. It makes you feel like you're losing part of your history and part of what you've done all your life, you know? It's, it's hard to explain. You, know, you could almost get emotional thinking about it if you wanted to. And do you, like, do you care about the corals? Yeah, everybody cares about the corals, you know, but uh, I don't believe we're harming them, you know? You, They've been there for a thousand years, and people have been fishing there for hundreds of years, you know? They're still there, you know? Many fisheries are questioning the legality of establishing this monument through executive power. Brewer and other local fishermen think that designating the monument by executive order through the Antiquities Act, and not a bill negotiated by Congress, is an unfair way to keep the fishermen out of the process. So I've spoken to some fishermen uh, down in New Bedford, Massachusetts. They feel that they're going to be really negatively impacted by this. What would you say to them? I'd say that there are other areas where they can do the same kind of fishing. Do you think that the fishermen, the, the ones that I've spoken to, have been very vocal, that um, they feel left out, that they're for conservation, but you know that area, they want, they want to have access to it. Do you think that they have a right to be upset right now? They have a right to be heard. I think the president should hear them. He's going to make the decision about both the boundaries and the existence of this national monument. And their arguments ought to be given the weight they deserve. With this monument now declared, many fisheries will have to stop their practices immediately. The red crab and lobster fisheries, however, will have seven years to continue fishing in the area as they make a transition to other waters.